up? Welcome back to the Rogue's Passage. I'm Tanner Cherry, here again with another deck tech. Uh, this is one that I'm really excited to play with here. I've been playing this as a pre-con for a bit, but I finally put together a list to buff this guy up. And uh, let's see where we're going to take Liberty Prime Recharged and Illegal Partner Pairing with Dr. Madison Lee. This is something that you can do if, uh, if you want to follow what I'm going to do with this deck list. It's going to be the Partner Pairing. Uh, if your player doesn't like that, just throw Madison Lee probably into the deck. The, the deck is built around Liberty Prime. Uh, this guy is just incredible. Let's get over to the deck tech screen here. So deck is called De Democracy is non-negotiable, obviously. Um, we have Dr. Madison Lee and Liberty Prime Recharged as partner pairing in the command zone because uh, it's a thematic choice. I mean, you can see that Liberty Prime's in the, in the uh, artwork there with Madison Lee, if you know anything about the games, which, I mean, I'm not a devout Fallout player, but I did dig up the lore and everything and this, the whole Liberty Prime arc is ridiculous. Uh, and it it's a very fun deck to play and it's it's definitely my style. It's Jeskai, it's sort of Voltron-ish, but it also has some legs and some, some ability to keep up with what other people are doing at the table. So we've got Dr. Madison Lee, which is a three drop that's basically going to enable us to, uh, whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get an energy. She is there solely essentially for options to use our energy with and helping with producing energy to fuel the robot. I mean, that's her whole story arc in the Fallout series, right? Is she's trying to get this robot back online. So that's why she's there. Let's talk about Liberty Prime Recharged. This is two blue, red, and a white. Uh, legendary artifact creature robot vigilance trample haste. Whenever Liberty Prime Recharged attacks or blocks, sacrifice it unless you pay two energy. So that you, you got to remember that blocking thing too. Every time it blocks, you got to make sure you have fuel for the fire. It can pay two mana and tap, sacrifice an artifact. You get two energy and draw a card. Uh, sometimes we're going to be doing that just to be able to get the fuel. But I think, I don't know, I, I built the deck to be able to supplement the, the fuel cost of this giant belligerent robot as much as I could. Uh, did I mention it's an 8-8 for five mana with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste? We're going to be trying to kill people with the robot. That's, that's what's going to happen. Uh, let's talk about draw section. All right. Curry Emergent Intelligence comes in the deck and is a really interesting way to create a copy essentially of Liberty Prime that then when it connects, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw cards equal to its base power. So it's worth the swap. You, you end up sending uh, Liberty Prime back to the command zone by exiling it with its ability but you turn it, Liberty Prime into an absolute house as if he already wasn't. Esper Sentinel, it's white, it's in the deck, it's just an incredible draw engine. It's uh, much like a Rhystic Study, which is here as well. Um, Glimmer of Genius, obviously a draw spell that adds energy. You're gonna see stuff like this in the list because we really need to prioritize making sure we keep up with the energy cost. You know, in, in this day and age, in this economy, we gotta we gotta make energy. Uh, Joy Red Weatherlight Captain, whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. Historic spells are legendaries, artifacts, and sagas. There's no sagas in the deck, but we got a lot of artifacts and we do have legendaries. So this card's a house as well. It's going to work. Uh, Synth Eradicator. When Synth Eradicator attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may get two energy. If you don't, you may play this card this turn. So everything in the deck is going to try and help and enable the robot to attack. But also there's like perks that it gives you otherwise. And uh, Synth Eradicator, I think, is going to stay in the list. Thopter Spy Network. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control an artifact, create a 1-1 one -one Thopter with flying. I mean, just a great little card there. Whenever one or more artifact creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. It's uh, it's going to work in this deck for sure. Thoughtcast normally costs five, but if you got artifacts, it's potentially a one blue mana draw two cards, which is wonderful. Uh, tune the narrative as well. Draw a card, you get two energy. Obvious inclusion in the deck. And Whirlwind of Thought. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. Love it. Love that card. Energy Factory. This category, these cards are in the deck to help create energy and ways to use them as well. We got Aetherworks Marvel. Whenever a permanent you control is put into a graveyard, you get an energy. And then you may pay six and look at the top six, cast a card from among them without paying its mana cost. That might end up not being used all that often because six energy for a deck that has a very low curve. I don't know if I'm going to risk that to maybe cast a one or two drop or a piece of ramp or something. So basically in the deck, just to make sure everything going to the graveyard gives us energy. Amped Raptor enters the battlefield, get two energy. Then I can use energy to cast something uh, sort of on like a cascade ability. Pretty cool card 
definitely staying in the list. Uh, a Sultron Dominator is a robot that enters the battlefield. You get two energy. Whenever an artifact creature you control attacks, I can pay one energy. If I do put your choice of a one, one, plus one, plus one, first strike or trample counter on that creature. Yeah, so this is quite good. Whenever it enters, you get the energy to enable uh, Liberty Prime. And then whenever it attacks, you can make Liberty Prime more threatening. Uh, Gonti's Aetherheart. Whenever Gonti's Aetherheart or another artifact enters the battlefield under control, you get two energy. So that's going to create a lot of energy for us in this deck. I think we have something like 25 or 26 artifacts total, which I mean, I, we'll see. I, I, I do have to play test this deck and see if it works. Pay eight energy, take another turn. So yeah wonderful card in this deck. Is it Generatorium? Blue and red for if you would get one or more energy, you get that much plus one instead, and then you can tap to draw a card only if you've paid or lost four or more energy this turn. We'll see how much that clause com comes up. I really do have to get this deck together and play it. And keep an eye out. It'll be on the channel sometime in the new year. Uh, we talked about mechanized production briefly. This is sort of just a way to copy any artifact on the battlefield. The, the clause of getting eight or more of that one with the same name, usually best to pair it with thopters or uh treasure tokens or something but we'll see where it goes uh plasma caster love this card it's an equipment that when you put it on liberty prime whenever a cre equipped creature attacks you get two energy which is what liberty prime needs to fuel his ability to attack and block so kind of pays for itself and then it has a pay two energy um choose target creature that's blocking equipped creature flip a coin if you win exile the chosen creature otherwise plasma caster deals one damage to it so interesting card uh, Riddlegate Gargoyle is white and a blue for a artifact creature gargoyle flying, enters the battlefield, get three energy. When you attack, you may pay two, target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. Great to buffer your life total with an 8-8 Vigilance, Trample, Haste, or whatever the, uh, the Liberty Prime is in the command zone. Whirler Virtuoso, obviously, three mana, enters the battlefield, three energy. You can then use energy to create Thopters. You can do that at instant speed. You can kind of ambush for blocking or create flyers for the next turn kind of thing. Uh, it was great in standard. It was great in draft. It was just, it's an all-around great card in energy decks, and it's got to be in here. Oh, okay, we got to talk about evasion here. Uh, Bria, Riptide Rogue. This card, when I originally made this list, this card had not come out yet, uh, but now it's since Bloomboro is released. Bria is incredible. It is a four mana Otter Rogue. Prowess, other creatures you control have prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. Very good for getting Liberty Prime through. And I mean, maybe other parts of your board too. Uh, Whirler Rogue, enters the battlefield, create two Thopters. Uh, so we can sacrifice those to Liberty Prime if we need to get energy. We can use them as blockers. We can use them as attackers. But we can also use those two Thopters to tap. Target creature can't be blocked this turn or any other artifacts. Or the Rogue definitely deserves a spot in this deck for being able to create tokens and find a way to finish the game. Uh, we got the protection category here. Uh, a Chrome as well. This card will go in essentially any deck that has white that I play. I love the what this card does. And I, I mean, I died to it recently, actually, on our uh, gameplay episode we did with that I played the Locust God. Definitely took a beating from this card. It is, it is really good for three and a white at instant speed. Counterspell? Gotta have your vegetables, right? Gotta have your vegetables. Uh, we got Deflecting Swat and Fierce Guardianship in the deck. They are just too good and they just work. And, and also Deflecting Swat actually makes for like really silly and weird interactions and great stack interactions. Somebody tries to do something really, really heinous and you can kind of just like redirect and, and turn it all around. I, I I think Deflecting Swat is a great card and it's in the deck because, uh, well, I mean, look at this art. Oh, $54.99 though for that copy. Don't know if I'll be putting that one in here. Uh, Lightning Greaves, protection. Creature has haste and trap. Mana drain and negate for some other counter spells. Uh, we got Padim in here. This is a three and a blue artifact creature that gives artifacts that control hexproof. And then Teferi's protection to uh, hopefully stop someone from eliminating you or be able to win the next turn kind of thing. All right, this category is pump spells. We've got some stuff to just help turn what is already an 8-8 in the command zone into a serious threat. Battle Mastery is an aura that gives it double strike. Boros Charm is an instant that can give it double strike, or it can save your permanents, give them indestructible until end of turn. Uh, Duelist's Heritage. This is an enchantment that says whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn. That works on anyone's combat. It's kind of cool. You can use it political. Uh, Legion Leadership. This is a new one that is actually a land on the back side. This is uh, Legion Stronghold. Enters tapped. It taps for Boros Mana, but it is an instant until end of turn double target creature's power and it gains first strike. So you'd be attacking for 16 with Liberty Prime with this. Pretty, pretty decent. Uh, this is a card that I added recently to the list and I'm excited to see where it goes. This is Razorfield Ripper, two and a white. It is a reconfigure artifact creature. Uh, so it's sort of like an equipment. Whenever Razorfield Ripper or equipped creature attacks, 
you get an energy counter. Then it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of energy you have. Uh, I've used this in, it, I think it came in the Satya deck, and I've used it in there, and it, it gets out of hand real quick. Uh, you can reconfigure, pay two mana or three energy to attach it to target creature, which will likely be Liberty Prime. Also, I don't know how Liberty Prime is going to fit in the T45 power armor, but that's magic. It's strange. Uh, we got this in the deck here. It is a two mana artifact equipment. Enters the battlefield. We get two energy, which is wonderful. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and doesn't untap during its controller's untap step, which is great because, I mean, it has vigilance, so we don't really have to worry about that unless we use its tap ability to... Wait, does it tap to... Yeah, two mana and tap, sack an artifact, you get two energy and draw a card. Well, we don't really want to use that while we got the power armor on. But at the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay one energy. If you do untap equipped creature, then put your choice of a menace, trample, or lifelink counter on it. Quite a good card for Liberty Prime. Giving it menace or lifelink is quite a quite a good thing to do uh team or battle rage very very it's again it's like vegetables you want you want your commander to be attacking and trying to kill people might as well give it double strike all right here's the ramp section um i tried to make i got like the mind stone the soul ring the arcane signet uh and the talismans all in the fallout printings as an homage to of course the two commanders helming the deck uh, we got arcane signet uh azorius boros and is it signet so we got the four signets, of course, uh, and then we've got Enthusiastic Mechanaut, Ethereum Sculptor, and Foundry Inspector, which are all going to make my artifacts cost one less. Those should do a lot of work in this deck. Uh, Mind Stone, also the Fallout printing, which is pretty beautiful. Uh, we got a Smothering Tithe with horrifying art. Horrifying. Ugh. Smothering Tithe is just, its it always works. You're going to be able to cast your spells and... Don't be surprised if people take it off the board and remove it. <laughs> uh, we got Soul Ring. Solar Transformer enters tapped for two mana, but it gives you three energy and it taps for colorless, or you can pay energy to add one mana of any color. So yeah, we've got 14 pieces ramp in the deck. We really want to get this commander, like the five mana commander out soon ASAP and get rolling with it. It's uh, It's got a mission, you know, it doesn't wait. Uh, removal. We got nine pieces of removal in the deck. We got Chaos Warp, kind of hits anything on the battlefield. They get something back but it's very versatile for decks that have red. Dispatch is as long as you have three or more artifacts, exile target creature for one mana, or you can just tap if you don't have the, the, the Metalcraft. Galvanic Discharge is really good card. It's really uh, powerful in the modern deck right now as well. One mana and you get three energy and then you can pay any amount of energy to deal damage to uh, permanent. So if you have energy lying over, you can use it to scale up, which is really nice. Uh, generous Gift, destroy something. Grasp of Fate, exile one thing from each opponent until it leaves the battlefield. Lightning Bolt, oh, we gotta change the printing on that one. Oh yeah. Let's go with the Strixhaven Mystical Archive. I love that one. Uh, Path to Exile as well. Reality Shift, similar to Swords and Path. Uh, yeah, we just got efficient removal. Very efficient removal so that we can get through. Um, Loyal Apprentice in the Tokens category. Uh, the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, create a Thopter with Flying, that token gains haste. This just allows us to keep putting artifacts on the board and Flying, Blockers, Attackers, very, very valuable. Uh, Sahili Sublime Artificer, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature token. And it's got this minus two that you can use a couple times. Target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature you control until end of turn except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Sometimes this comes up in very strange ways, and I, I like I like playing Sahili, and you know, sometimes it just does really wacky, stupid, weird things. Ah, Psy, Master Thopter is looking fly as always. Uh, whenever I cast an artifact, create a Thopter, or I can sack two artifacts to draw a card. Very versatile in, in artifact decks. Always got to have them in there. And I am going to include Satya, Aetherflux Genius, from the newer Precon. These are often melded, the uh, the Liberty Prime, Dr. Madison Lee, and then the Satya deck. They were two Jeskai energy decks, commander decks, were released very close to each other. And I would love, actually, if you put in the comments uh, what you guys did with that, with combining the two, what kind of strategies, what kind of deck lists. Please post your list in the comments. I would love to see what you guys have done. Satya, out of the box, stock list, very fun deck to play, very fun. And then we're running Enlightened Tutor. Search your library for an artifact or enchantment. No explanation needed there. Just an incredible card. And Unwinding Clock is in the deck. Untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. Shouldn't even need a description on that. It's going to, especially because we have so many different pieces of artifact ramp, it's going to untap all those during each other people, person's turn. So very good card in the deck. And then, yeah, I'm going to scroll through the mana base here. If you want to click on the, the deck list link, it'll be in the description. Check out the, the mana base for this deck. It, it I, I decided last minute here to put the, uh, the overworld 
fallout printings of the basic lands in here as well. So yeah, we've just got a, a healthy Jeskai mana base for this deck and obviously a Rogue's Passage. Got to change the printing on that. What are we doing? I really need to get some of these to put in all of our decks. Beautiful, beautiful secret layer Rogue's Passage. Yeah, so if you want to check out the list yourself, it's in the description. This deck for sure just wants to suit up the robot, pour a bunch of fuel in and throw nukes at your opponents and just smash them in the face. And it's unapologetically simple. There's not really too much other than that. It's got a little bit of removal. It's got a little bit of protection. It's got all sorts of stuff, but it's meant to be just sort of fun. I remember I, I kind of stalled on making this deck tech because I thought maybe I could like improve it or like fine tune it. And Brando kind of suggested, he was like, man, don't overthink it. It's it's a big dumb robot that just wants to smash you in the face. So just, just focus in on that and don't, don't overthink it. So that's what we're doing. And here's the list. Tell me what you think. If you would like to build this list yourself or if you have suggestions or how you'd like to build it, let me know in the comments. And thanks. I really appreciate you watching another one of our deck techs and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye guys. Ah!